the history of Microsoft. The year was 1982. The first artificial heart was implanted into a human for the first time. Princess Grace of Monaco died from injuries suffered in a car accident, and Waiting for a Girl Like You by Foreigner was topping the charts. But music and royalty weren't the only things making headlines. In March of 1982, Microsoft UK is incorporated, becoming the first official international subsidiary for Microsoft. And in June, there's a changing of the guard. Well, sort of. James C. Town is appointed president and chief operating officer of Microsoft. In July, he took over all responsibilities from Bill Gates, who will assume the title of executive vice president, responsible for all development activities. Bill Gates also remains chairman of the board. Later that month, Microsoft got a new look as they announced a new corporate logo, new packaging, and a comprehensive set of retail dealer support materials. Later that summer, Microsoft became a registered trademark in the U.S. and acquired a fax machine for in-house use. It was a Panafax 1200. Microsoft's local area network, MyLAN, is now fully functional, linking all of Microsoft's in-house development computers, many of which are running Xenix. Now this system will simplify email delivery on-site, and to help simplify it even further, Bill Gates became Bill G. On August 1st, 1982, Microsoft Multiplan version 1 for MS-DOS ships. Well, our basic was fairly deep. Uh, the basic they first put in this machine was really, really limited. It was, uh, uh, it just, it wasn't going to be expandable and they wanted to put on uh, graphics, they wanted to put on a disc, they wanted to have sound, and we, we knew how to do those things. We went in and showed them we could help them design new machines, really work in partnership with them, and do it even less expensively than they could, trying to manage software development themselves. In the case of Apple, Wozniak had done the integer basic, and he was playing around thinking about doing a floating point basic. I don't know why he never got around to it, but they knew they needed one, and so they had uh, uh, Jobs and Randy Wigington came out, talked to us, and I put the cassette extensions in, integrated in, into their ROM, and that became what was called AppleSoft Basic. Uh, in terms of the Commodore PET, they started with us from the very beginning because we helped uh, Chuck Peddle, uh, who was a Commodore at that time, really think about the design of the machine, uh, adding lots of fun characters to the character set, things like smiley faces and suit symbols. That was the first machine we did that had this wild uh, uh, extended character set. and uh, uh, the, All these machines started out using cassette-based storage where we could store about uh, 1,200 baud uh, worth of data on these, on these cassette tapes. So this was really a, a generation of machines. The, these were the, the popular 8-bit machines. There was a, another type of 8-bit machine that was a little higher end um, that were the, the CPM80 machines, uh, all of which ran this operating system from digital research. And uh, we wrote our languages to run on top of that. That was Gary Kildall's company. And that, that really defines uh, the 8-bit eight, eight era of computing. I mean, there were some refinements, uh, like uh, we can see here that, that Radio Shack built a portable version of their computer. Um, and uh, this is the Osborne computer. That's actually a CPM-based uh, computer. And it, it was, you know, here's, this is an attempt at portability in this 8-bit era. We're actually running on the, um, uh, this machine here, our, uh, one of our first applications. We were broadening out by now into a lot more than, than just basic. We had a portfolio of languages. But we also had a, a spreadsheet, and we were about to come out with the word processor. So this is the, the uh, screen appearance of the spreadsheet called Multiplan. It's kind of an obscure footnote in history because VisiCalc that came before it, the real uh, creator of that category, did incredibly well in the Apple II. And we designed our spreadsheet to work on 8-bit machines uh, and uh, the, the next generation. But a, 1, 2, 3, which was only designed for the 16-bit machines, got ahead in terms of features. And so Multiplan, although contributed a lot of good ideas, actually uh, uh, was essentially passed by with the work that uh, Lotus did on 1, 2, 3. In October of 1982, Microsoft took a personal hit, as Paul Allen was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which was localized and in a very treatable form. 
he was put on a limited work schedule while undergoing treatment. And although his treatment was successful, he would resign from Microsoft in 1983. While Microsoft was busy releasing Typing Tutor 2 for Apple II, Softcar Premium, and Flight Simulator for MS-DOS, major news was happening around the world. There was the Tylenol tampering scare, where seven people died from taking cyanide-laced Tylenol capsules. Johnson & Johnson quickly recalled over 30 million bottles. 1982 also gave us the beginnings of Diet Coke and equal artificial sweetener. And less than four months after IBM introduced the PC, Time Magazine named the computer as the man of the year. It was the year 1982, and year-end sales totaled over $24 million. The 1982 calendar year employee headcount was 220 people. But things for Microsoft were about to take a dramatic turn, as one of its co-founders makes a life-altering decision. Yeah.